The Society of St. Pius X, the SSPX, is in schism. I will distill what some claim to be muddy waters, leaving you with the plain and simple facts. I will show you why many souls earnestly seeking traditional Catholicism are being led astray by the society. This is a topic often saturated with legalistic, a bit more on this word later, and superfluous debate, with lots of noise in Catholic media recently, which I'll briefly cover. But I'm going to show you exactly why the society is schismatic, clearly and concisely. How and why th did this all start? And what is the latest on the negotiations? Can we prove the society is schismatic? What are the views of some key people? And if you stick to the end, there are some surprises on this front. What are the common objections? Did the, lift, did the lifting of excommunications prove there is no schism? I will answer these questions and more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us wisdom and understanding to know truth, O Lord. Give us the grace to be humble and obedient. Our Lady, pray for us. Before we start, let's briefly cover the recent drama in the Catholic media space on the SSPX. There is, of course, always tireless debate on various platforms about the society, but with the SSPX providing services during the lockdown, in contrast to the closed Catholic churches, this has sparked some of the commentary. More importantly, however, Church Militant recently released a documentary report we should all watch. Although much of the tragic news is indeed historic, the meticulously researched expose on the child abuse crisis and the cover-ups in the SSPX sheds a new light on the society, whose house has evidently not been in order for a long time, irrespective of their glaring and unavoidable intrinsic issues with disobedience. This has really fanned the flame of the already heated debate. And as such, YouTube commentators like Dr. Taylor Marshall and Timothy Gordon have entered the fray. You can probably guess whose side I'm on. Anyway, that's enough on that. Let's get into the question at hand. Okay, let me open by clarifying, yes, the church has been infiltrated by modernists, not to mention other nefarious groups, and much has been lost due to liberal influences, particularly during the past century. This is a fact we can all agree on. It is a truism. I'm going to show you why the SSPX's actions in response whilst they may be well-intentioned, are not justifiable, but indeed schismatic. In fact, their very foundations are built on disobedience, and insubordination has run deep these past decades. Ultimately, this has led to objective schism. Souls are at danger unless they return to full communion. Schism, as defined by the Code of Canon Law, is... Quote, the refusal of submission to the supreme pontiff or of communion with the members of the church subject to him. End quote. This is crystal clear. As there has been no official pronouncement, it is not formal, but indeed material schism in question. But there is no ambiguity here. I've seen lots of ambitious legalistic defences proposed by the society, but they are simply non-starters and I will cover this later. Just before we move on, I also think it's important to note the etymology of the word schism. It comes from the Greek for to split. So now that the scene is set, disclaimers and definitions out of the way, let's look at some key documents, statements and events, the history of it all. The society was founded in Switzerland in 1970 by Archbishop Lefebvre as essentially a conservative seminary and was recognised as a priestly society in communion with Rome. The Pia Unio, Latin for Pious Union, issued to the SSPX in November of 1970 attests to this. However, tensions bubbled away. 
amidst curial visits and dealings with the church hierarchy. Disagreements over Vatican II were, of course, front and center. And in 1975, the bishop of the local diocese revoked the Pia Unio, leaving the society with no canonical status. Despite the removal of the Pia Unio and a direct rebuke of Archbishop Lefebvre by Pope Paul VI, Lefebvre nevertheless proceeded with the ordinations of 12 priests in 1976, a clear act of disobedience. Thus began Lefebvre's suspension ad divinis, a canonical suspension removing most of his ecclesiastical powers. The SSPX continued to practice and grew in number. In 1984, an indult, which is basically an exceptional permission granted by the Pope, was offered. This would allow practice of the old liturgy according to the 1962 Missal, on the condition that the new Mass was acknowledged. The Society rejected the chance at returning to full communion, however. So we now arrive at the infamous 1988 consecrations of four bishops by Lefebvre in Econ, Switzerland. The Archbishop, now into his 80s, wanted to ensure a succession plan, a succession plan was in place, and thus made plans to consecrate four bishops, claiming the state of necessity defence, which we'll cover later, clear instruction from Cardinal Ratzinger and the Pope himself ensued, making it clear that this would be a schismatic act. Lefebvre went ahead regardless. Pope John Paul II responded in no uncertain terms, issuing the apostolic letter Ecclesia Dei. The letter makes clear both the pain the act caused the church, but also the severity of it. Quote, in itself, this act was one of disobedience to the Roman pontiff in a very grave matter and one of supreme importance for the unity of the church, such as is the ordination of bishops, whereby the apostolic succession is sacramentally perpetuated. Hence, such disobedience, which implies in practice the rejection of the Roman primacy, constitutes a schismatic act." Unquote. These were the words of the Pope. Despite this grave act of disobedience, the Pope continued the offer of the Church's generous mercy. He extended the reach of the 1984 indult relating to the 1962 Missal. The letter also instituted the Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Dei, which was tasked with the care of the followers of the Schismatic Society and ultimately with resolving to full communion. The years that followed were relatively quiet, with somewhat positive relations between the Commission and the Society, until in 2007 Pope Benedict issued Summorum Pontificum. This apostolic letter essentially superseded all previous indults on the 1962 Missal, making it considerably more accessible, i.e. with fewer hoops to jump through to celebrate the Tridentine Mass. Quote, it is therefore permitted to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass following the typical edition of the Roman Missal, which was promulgated by Blessed John the Twenty-Third in 1962 and never abrogated. Unquote. By now, Bishop Bernard Fillet had replaced Lefebvre. For him, Summorum Pontificum, whilst being a positive development, was not enough. Fillet did not want to agree to the condition Pope Benedict had outlined in his accompanying letter, i.e. to acknowledge the new Mass as of equal right. And we'll get on to just what the SSPX say about the new Mass shortly. Two years later, in 2009, in a further act of mercy aimed at opening the door to full communion, Pope Benedict lifted the excommunications on the four bishops in his letter Ecclesia Unitatem, 
In that very same letter, however, he clarifies, quote, The doctrinal questions obviously remain, and until they are clarified, the society has no canonical status in the church, and its ministers cannot legitimately exercise any ministry, end quote. Regardless, Fillet continued in the spirit of insubordination. The 2011 beatification of John Paul II and its implications created a further insurmountable hurdle for Fillet, and in 2012, following prolonged negotiation with the Ecclesia Dei Commission, Fillet confirmed the society's stance, their position on religious liberty, collegiality, ecumenism, the new mass and liturgical reform remain unchanged. The wholesale rejection of Vatican II remained. Pope Francis's indults of 2016 and 2017, which would allow priests of the society to administer the sacraments of marriage and reconciliation are exactly that, indults. This was done in aid to eventually achieve full communion. Quote, for the pastoral benefit of these faithful, and trusting in the goodwill of their priests to strive with God's help for the recovery of full communion with the church. Unquote. In part two, I will cover what the SSPX's professed beliefs are in a bit more detail. What do they actually say? And then I'm going to cover what some key people we really ought to listen to are saying about this. And I'll close up with some final remarks. Our Lady, pray for us.